Recently, I installed Home Assistant to relieve myself of the tedium of UI development and to gain some features I didn't have the time or immediate knowledge to code myself. While I was doing this, I realized how many devices I'd accumulated. I stopped counting devices at some point because adding them was so easy. They just got configured, added to a list, and I went about my business. This is a dashboard I made of all the power metering devices in my system, which right now is all of my relays, and all of my relays are Shelly relays. I'll talk about the reason for this a little later. So one thing that's been bothering me lately about this dashboard is that it doesn't show me how much power my entire house is drawing from the grid. I aim to solve this and still maintain individual circuit monitoring so I can see which devices are the worst offenders. The way I'm going to do this is with several of these, although I only have one of these at the moment. This is a Shelly EM, or energy meter. It uses a current transformer to measure magnetic flux. As electricity flows through or around the conductor, it produces a magnetic field. This field has a direction relative to the flow of electrons in the primary wire or wires and causes electrons to move in the secondary coil. This is electromotive force at work, just like in a generator, but the field is created by another current source rather than a magnet and rotational force. I encourage people to think of electricity more like a bicycle roller chain system than water flowing through a pipe. Both are sloppy examples if you dive deep enough, but the advantage of the roller chain example is that it's easier to intuit certain principles of speed, or current, more naturally in my opinion. This is a bicycle, in case you were wondering. If I turn the pedals, the wheel turns, and if I turn the wheel, the pedals turn. Bear with me, it gets a little more interesting. This is functionally similar to the relationship between a generator and a motor. One important thing to realize in this parallel is that the speed of the chain is the current and the weight applied to the pedal is the voltage. If I make the gear on the front larger than the gear in the rear, the gear in the rear spins faster, but requires more force to turn, and the opposite is true if the gear in the back is larger. This is similar to the relationship between coils and the transformer. The coils transfer electromotive force to each other relative to their windings. But we're not doing that, so why am I talking about it? Well, if I wanted to judge the speed the chain is moving without altering the gears at either end, I could add a smaller idler sprocket somewhere along the chain and record its speed. At that point, all I need to know is the size of the gear and a short formula to get the speed of the chain. That is exactly what this current transformer clamp is. It uses the high current of the power line in a practically passive way to produce a smaller current so you can measure it safely. I say practically because it does add a very, very small amount of resistance to the circuit you're measuring, but such is the way of the universe. Nothing is free. Installation of this device is fairly simple, although finding a good place for it may be difficult if you have an older system or unique circumstances. You need to install the clamp over the hot wire of the circuit you would like to monitor. The orientation of the clamp matters, so you'll want the control wire to be on the left if you are looking at the wire going in the direction of the mains breaker or load. This is more to do with the circuitry than the way the transformer works. I suspect if I open this device, I'll find that it is rectifying and measuring DC current, but I could be wrong. If you're interested in a breakdown of this device, let me know in the comments. The red wire from the clamp goes to the P1 positive terminal, and the black goes to the P1 negative terminal. If you're using two clamps, connect the second in the same order on the P2 terminals, which I am. You'll need to wire a hot and neutral to the Shelly EM to power it. Here, I'm simply tapping off the power to my switch system. The hot goes to the L terminal, and the neutral to the N terminal. You can also use this device to control a heavy AC contactor with the hot for the contactor on terminal O, but I'm not doing that in this setup. I will definitely be doing another video with one of these to control a contactor later on though. With the energy meter installed and powered on, I can access the ad hoc Wi-Fi network from my phone and navigate my browser to 192.168.33.1, like all Shelly devices. Once there, I can set up the Wi-Fi connection, and then I'll switch to my computer and log back into the device to check for firmware updates, set up MQTT or other settings, and set a device password. Then I'll go over to my Home Assistant and add the device, which is automatically detected, and all I need to do is give it my password if I have one, and the area the device is located. I won't actually bother setting that, because this is the whole house power anyway. 
Two clamps are required to meter the mains power in the United States, which is not something you need to worry about outside the U.S. in a 240 system. I have to worry about it because I have two 120 hot wires that need to be monitored. In the U.S., 240 volt AC power is delivered to our houses, but split into two 120 volt lines from the distribution transformer. Now, you may remember I said I wanted to monitor all of the circuits in my house independently. Well, that's not what this is doing, but that's because I will eventually have Shelly EMs on all of the hots coming off of the circuit breakers, and this one will simply stay here and be a redundant meter for total power. It will be a little pricey to do it this way, but it has several advantages I want. Not the least of which is that it will help me finally map all of the circuit breakers in my house and what they go to. By letting me remotely view power changes while I go room to room turning things on and off or plugging things in, I'll finally be able to make the map of the exact fixtures, appliances, and outlets on each breaker. This isn't the only way to do this, and it is a little bit roundabout of a way, but I want to have the metering on each line anyway. If you want to do what I'm doing and monitor individual circuits, and you live in the US, You'll need to keep in mind that monitoring our two 40 volt lines might require two probes if you're working with a three wire appliance because you still have two 120 volt hot wires. If the 240 is tapped off of the two opposing transformer wires, you'll only need one. I mentioned earlier that all of my relays are Shelly. This is also true of my motion sensors and now my energy meters as well as some other devices. You might think they sponsor me or something, but that isn't the case. They recently reached out to me and offered to send me a device for free. The Shelly EM I used in this video is that device, but there is no sponsorship relationship at the moment I'm making this video. I don't have any agreement with them about promoting this device. They sent me something I wanted anyway, and if they did ever sponsor me or send other devices, I wouldn't have a problem supporting them because I actually like and use them. They'd only be helping me talk about what I already like. I wanted to make sure my viewers know that I would never promote something I would not use myself. I think that's a dangerous thing to do. If any company sends me a product I don't like, I'll either say I don't like it or never say anything about it at all if they prefer. On the topic of Shelly and sending me this energy meter so I could do this video for everyone, if they're watching, I want to thank the folks over at Shelly for the really neat gadget. I'm glad I got to share it with my viewers and I hope you don't mind if I take it apart. In the next video, I'm going to be covering another Shelly device, but I'll talk about that in that video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and of course if you did, please give me a thumbs up because it helps me see I'm doing the right thing and helps YouTube know I'm likable. Also, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue exploring smarter circuits.